Hey, welcome back. We're in the last verse in chapter 22, and we're going to move on into 23 tomorrow. But here's uh, verse 31. You shall be holy men to me, therefore you shall not eat any flesh torn to pieces in the field. You shall throw it to the dogs. So the last verse in the chapter uh, it says, you will be holy to me. In fact, all these things we've been discussing day by day, they seem like they're kind of obscure, different laws. But remember, we're talking about applying the Ten Commandments in particular cases, and they're giving the judges kind of uh, two, uh, groupings of two or three laws usually here, two or three things that will help them sort of steer and make a proper judgment based on the unique pieces of their case that they have to address. So here we have uh, this last statement here, which is at the same as the Ten Commandments. You'd be holy to me. That's why I'm giving you the Ten Commandments. God has given us Ten Commandments so that we will be holy. Uh, here we have these applications we've been looking at. And now he kind of ties this piece off with, uh, remember, your purpose, your design for holiness. You will be holy to me. So then one K example case here, suppose you find a carcass in the field and it looks, you know, it smells sort of halfway okay. Uh, take it and put it on the barbecue. Well, no. If it's been torn by animals, God says no, because you are a holy person to me. You just don't, any random thing that's been contaminated by animals has probably got bacteria going to town in there. You don't want to mess with that. And so anything that you find that's halfway there, you throw it away. You, you give it, let the dogs eat it. So here you have the, the word on that. Pretty clear stuff. Why? because we're making a difference between the clean and unclean, because humans are supposed to maintain a certain amount of dignity. We are made in God's image, so we, we live a little bit higher. We are, we are to re not forget our high, high place. Go to Romans chapter 1 and 2, and what do you find there? Men, men and women forgetting their high place as creations of God and descending down to the brute creation in the way they relate to other people and the, way, the things that they take pleasure in. So God is always kind of bringing us up, bringing us up to that beautiful place of holiness. That's his plan for you and me. I have a little note here I made from uh, which, whichever one of the commentaries it was. Almost every time in Torah, the Torah introduces the subject of what foods one may eat or may not eat, it is invariably connected with holiness. Isn't that interesting? And you know, if you think about it, it's true. Whenever the, the first five books of the Bible speak to us, about foods we can and cannot eat, usually somewhere right nearby there, it's talking about holiness. So what you eat, uh, that, that sort of has a relation then again to your dignity as a human person. God wants good health for his children. God has beautiful plans for you and I. And when we eat junk food and trash and, and you know, if it's in a plastic bag, it's almost certainly uh, poisoned or trash. Uh, you know, if you want to get the best food, go into the produce section of your store and look for cucumbers and carrots and vegetables and fruits, blackberry. Blackberries are like the, like the healthiest superfood out there. You almost won't even find that anywhere. But anyway, find the things to eat that will especially uh, help your health to be good and eat them in proper amounts and you'll just be blessed because God wants to lift us up. So I'd stay away from the food torn by animals out in the field. Uh, leave that for the dogs. That's what the Bible says. And remember, you and I are made for holiness. Hey, have a beautiful rest of this day. And tomorrow we'll come back and move over to chapter 23. And we'll deal with a few things coming in along there. And then we're headed to some very interesting developments uh, just very close by. All right. Thank you.